Hey guys, welcome back to Hike Oregon. Today's video is going to be all about navigation basics. I wanted to do a three-part series all about navigation because navigation is super important and I always hear about people getting lost out in the woods while snowshoeing, on the trails, even just going off the trail to go to the bathroom. I've heard of people getting lost. So having some navigation basics is super important. This first video is just going to be laying out the basics of navigation and some just simple things that you should know before going out on the trail. The second video will be about electronic navigation tools. That will include me showing some examples of GPS devices as well as some apps and some maps that you can get. And the third video, probably the most exciting video, will be all about how to use a map and compass. And I'm going to have a special guest on that video to help explain the process better. While I know how to do triangulation and stuff like that, I don't feel like I would be very good at explaining it. So I'm bringing someone in who can hopefully explain it really well to you guys and have you learn a ton from that video. That will be the three-part Navigation 101 series and let's get started on this video. The first thing I wanted to mention is that you should always have certain things on hand before going out on the trail. One thing that I always carry is a physical map. Yes, you can have a GPS device, you can have the map downloaded on your phone, but devices fail. Your phone can die, your backup battery could die, especially if it is cold out, your phone is more likely to lose charge quickly. Same with your backup battery and same with your GPS device if you have an actual GPS. So it is super important to always have a physical map of the area that you're going to. And then it's also very important to know how to read the map. I'll show you the map and I'll go over that here right now. So this is a super simplified map. I love these maps a lot because they are so simple and easy to use. They have everything labeled from peaks to rivers and all the trails are labeled with numbers. So it's really, really awesome. I highly suggest getting one of these maps, especially if you're new to navigation. So this is the Adventure Maps Inc. map. They have maps for all over Oregon, Washington, Utah, I think Colorado and Wyoming. So the first thing you have to know about looking at a map is the direction here. So that'll show you north, south, east, west. And then you'll also want to take a look at the scale here. So it says here an inch is about half a mile. This is a really awesome map because it shows trails, but a lot of maps don't necessarily have trails on them, nor do they have this red number here. So you can see this red number here. That is how many miles it is from point to point. So there's a point and there's the other point. So from here, to here is 5.6 miles is what that says. So that is really awesome to know. And a lot of trail maps will have the mileage, but like I said, not every map that you are going to be taking is necessarily a trail specific map. It might just be a topographical map of the area, which is what my GPS device has. It doesn't necessarily show the trail. It just shows the topographical map. Another thing you should note on maps is the peaks and what they are in relation to you. So let's say you're going on the Green Lakes Trail, which starts right here. You know that you have Sparks Lake right across the road from you. You know that you are walking along Fall Creek and that the trail pretty much follows Fall Creek until Green Lakes right here. And then note that Broken Top is to your right, to the east, and South Sister is to your left. 
to the west. So that is always something super important to note is if there's any sort of peaks that you know what direction they should be in relation to you. The next thing I wanted to show that you should definitely know how to read is these elevation lines here. Different maps will have different spacing in between lines. Some will sh just show, you know, in between 100. Some will show in between 1,000 feet. Looks like this one shows every 500 feet. It'll show what elevation that is. You know that every line is 100 feet, basically. So that's 7,500 feet. That would be 7,600 feet, 7,700 feet, 7,800 feet. 7,900 feet and 8,000 feet. That is very handy to know because if you are in a situation where you do have to climb up a peak, for example, if you were lost right here, I sh probably should have shown a different map because it's almost impossible to get lost here, but, <laughs> but this is really just an example. So let's say you were lost somewhere here and you're in the woods because this trail is completely in the woods and you were lost and you wanted to triangulate to see where you needed to go. So you have to go to a high point. Now you can see from this trail being in the woods that it goes steeply uphill, but you really have no idea how far uphill. So if you had a topographical map and you kind of knew you know, what vicinity you were in. You could see, oh, there, it looks like there's a butte here somewhere. Let's see the number of feet that we have to climb. So you would see that um, the trail is like right about here, which is the 6,000 foot line. Now, of course, if you're lost, you wouldn't necessarily know, oh, I'm exactly right here, but you could kind of pinpoint the area that you're in, hopefully. <laughs> and then you would count the lines, because I'm sure if you're just using a topographical map, it's not not going to show like all of these numbers so then you just count and you see that you have to climb up 800 feet and then you would be at the top. It's also important to note the different colors on the map. I know different maps have different coloring but just knowing what it means. For example this has completely different coloring than this map and you can tell how simplified this map is when you come and look at this map. <laughs> this map does not have all of the roads numbered and that kind of thing like over here these dotted lines are roads they're not all numbered. You come over here same sort of lines and they're all numbered which is super handy especially if you're getting lost going to the trailhead. <laughs> and then you can tell here what the colors mean which is awesome. So highway, secondary highway, improved road, high clearance road which that's super awesome to see on a map. So I actually prefer maps like this because it will help me to know if I can even get to that trailhead with my car. Whereas this map is not going to show any of that. It's purely a trail map. This map, for example, is a National Geographic map. So it definitely has trails. It has the trail name. It has the trail number. It has the mileage. It also has the names of the peaks names of the rivers and streams, and names of the lakes as well. And then last but not least, I wanted to show you a Forest Service map, which this one is going to be way more simplified here compared to the two other ones I just showed you. This is the sort of map that you would get from the Forest Service. Here is a trailhead, so it does show trailheads, and it does show the trail here. This faint dotted line is the trail. Again, this is not going to show you mileage or anything like that. It does have the trail number on it, but it will not show you mileage or little waypoints or necessarily, you know, how far it is to the next trail split. So this is a much more simplified map and it is super important for you to be able to read any kind of map. But I do recommend that if you are starting out and you have no idea how to read maps or anything like that, to start out with a simplified version like this one. Just familiarize yourself with something like this. Go hiking on a trail that's on one of these maps and just look at it during your hike a few times and try and pinpoint where you are on the trail during your hike and just practice like that. 
And then you can move on to one of these maps. Again, this, this one is very similar to this, but a, there's a little more going on. And then if you want to move on to something like this. If you have any questions about maps, just let me know in the comments below. I probably won't be going over maps again. This was pretty much the map overview. If you have any specific questions about maps, just let me know and I can maybe do a fourth video in this series that's just all about maps. But I feel like I covered pretty much everything in this video here. It's also important, obviously, to take a compass so that when you know how to do triangulation and you have the map, you can actually utilize those two things to figure out where you are and where you need to go if you are in a situation where you find yourself lost. And then the most important thing for me is to just keep your eyes out for physical landmarks. That will just help you so much in knowing where you are on the trail and knowing how to get back to that area if you were to find yourself lost. If you are walking on the trail and you're just talking and you're completely oblivious to where you're going or your surroundings, you will have a really hard time trying to get back to that area if you didn't even look around and see what's around you. I know this can be really difficult in certain areas in Oregon where you might just be hiking through the woods. The woods can all look the same, but just try even in those situations to find some sort of little landmark, whether it be a funny looking tree, maybe you see a funny tree and you take a picture of it because you think it looks cool, or a big boulder, or like a cool rock formation, you know, up on a hill or something. Keep in mind, you know, what side of you the hill is going up, or if there's a stream. Just be super aware of these things because these will help you immensely if you are lost. And these things will also help you if you are lost and you're looking on your map and you see, oh, Oh, the elevation line looks like the hill is going up over here. I remember about half a mile back the elevation was going up to our right. That sort of thing can save you if you are lost. And then also not only being aware of your surroundings but also being aware of which direction you're walking in. Especially if you are in an area where it's just dense woods and you wouldn't necessarily be able to find something to triangulate with. Let's say you're just in the woods, they're, you know, it's fairly flat, there isn't like a high point that you can then get to to have a view and be able to triangulate. It is super important to be aware of what direction the trail is going in. So let's say you're going northeast and you can tell on the map that the general trend of the trail is northeast and then you might loop around and just keep in mind trail splits. If there's no signs at a trail split it can be really easy to get lost and take the wrong trail. So a lot of the time I have come across trail splits in the trail that don't have signs. Also, I'm then looking at my phone where I've downloaded the map and it doesn't show the trail split. So I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to go. So just knowing what direction the trail is supposed to trend in can make it obvious which of the trail splits you have to go on. Otherwise, you could just end up going on the wrong trail and, you know, go a mile or so down and be like, oh, this doesn't feel right, you know? Or if you're with some friends and you're just talking away, it could be a couple miles before you figure out, oh, we're on the wrong trail completely, and then you gotta turn around, and if you're going on a loop, you know, that could make it so you're hiking out in the dark and that kind of thing. So there's definitely a lot of situations that you have to watch out for. Make sure you aren't getting lost. Also marking a trail split, if there is a trail split without signs or anything like that, marking it can help, um, you know, sticking a stick in there, in the ground, where you went. That way when you come back, you know which direction you actually came from so you don't end up going on the other wrong trail. So another situation where I've used some navigation skills is when hiking in the snow, especially in the spring season when you're going into higher elevations and let's say the trailhead is totally fine, there's no snow, 
further up you go, you see some snow, and then all of a sudden there's like just snow fields covering and there's no trail at all. That's a situation where you can get lost. So that's a situation where you probably want to use your GPS and mark where the trail ended, where the snow started, and where you've got to go back to. That is super important. Just set yourself a waypoint or start a GPS track on your phone. And then that way, you know, you can be ambling through the woods. You don't necessarily need a trail. You're walking on the snow. You're going to whatever viewpoint you're going to but that way you know where to come back to because you could just come back a completely different way and just miss where the trail starts completely and be in a completely different area. Either do that on your GPS, also you can mark you know, where the snow ends and the trail restarts. We did this last year, uh, we marked where we kind of went off trail. We marked the area with like a big, we put a big stick in the ground and then we put a colorful plastic bag on top of the stick so that we could see, you know, I think it was a red plastic bag. We could see that red plastic bag from pretty far away because it kind of sticks out in the woods. So something like that to help you. I also carry pink paracord. So, you know, cutting a piece of that off and tying it around a branch or a stick or something that would stick out a lot in the woods. Also, um, I know hunters oftentimes use like that super neon. I don't know what it's made out of, but it's like, it's kind of rubbery feeling. It comes in like a round, it's almost like ribbon, but it's waterproof. You know, it's, it's kind of like a rubbery material and you can cut it and then tie it on a little branch and those stick out like no other. I see them all over the place here in Oregon. That is something to think about if you know you're going into a, like a possible snowy situation. Um, you could carry something like that and make sure that you don't get lost. And then last but not least, I just wanted to say that you should know your own limits. Um, I know there's a lot of people that do like backcountry hiking, backcountry camping, where it's like going off trail to do some camping and exploring. I don't really recommend that, first of all, for leave no trace purposes, but also just know your own limits. If you are a little bit directionally challenged, you may not want to do something like that unless you're going with an experienced person. But also know that I used to be directionally challenged, and that is not a thing that you just have to live with. You can learn and hone your skills, you know, if you practice being aware of your surroundings, practice looking on the map frequently, you can really hone your skills and then you can feel super confident in going out there and being able to be like, yes, the trail's heading southwest and, you know, there's a mountain right there. Yeah, I used to be really, really bad at that. Just even driving to a trailhead, I wouldn't know if we're going northeast or whatever. You know, now, three years later, just practicing those skills, I feel very, very confident knowing all the names of the mountains, knowing what the mountains look like from every direction. I can pinpoint exactly what mountain that is. Those types of things are very, very, very important and can save your life if you are in a situation where you are lost. So just because you are directionally challenged does not mean that this is the end for you and you always have to go with a guide or an experienced outdoors person. You can learn skills and I hope this video series helps you in honing those skills. So let me know if you have any questions at all. Again, the next video will be all about GPS devices, GPS apps and those kinds of things that are available for you. And then the most important video will be the third one in the series and that will be triangulation and how exactly to use your map and compass. So stay tuned for all of that. Again, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next adventure.